Hello and welcome to our channel. I thought I'd take a time to do a brief update on our various growing areas. We focus mostly on peppers and cucumbers simply because that's what our primary focus is on growing here this time of year. I really miss my outdoor peppers. I really miss my outdoor cucumbers, although this year we met with far greater success with indoor cucumbers than outdoors simply because we were inundated with squash beetles and cucumber beetles. Um, our hydro plants did reasonably well outdoors. Our soil cucumber plants just failed to produce, mostly because of bugs and in one instance because of an escaped chicken. She escaped our enclosure, made her way into the garden area and ate my five plants in that area to the ground and they never recovered. And that's my own doing. I should have made sure that she was better secured. She was one of the bantams and she was able to squeeze her way into and out of amazingly small spaces. Lesson learned. Anyway, here I have the ahi pineapple that we've kept trimmed rather tightly trying to keep it in as small a space as possible. And yet we still have what I consider to be a decent amount of fruit compared to the size of the plant. Hopefully they will start ripening very soon. I've let some of the branches grow without pruning. So now we're seeing some more buds forming so that we can get some more peppers off of the plant sometime in the not too distant future. This is the plant that I started last spring. It spent a small amount of time, or I should say a short amount of time outdoors in the same container before being absolutely decimated by Japanese beetles, at which time I cut it back hard, brought it to the back deck where it made a moderate recovery and then opted to bring it inside and keep it under grow lights just off to the side of my computer monitor where it's done really well and it's made a nice comeback. So it's a bonchi of sorts, not because I'm trying to achieve a particular design, just because I'm trying to maintain a small growing area. Here I have one of our King Starling Grias. For whatever reason, they just seem to be a little bit more prone to edema of the leaves, and that's okay. Um, this was started mid-September. It's filled in reasonably well. I have one downstairs that's almost twice as big as this one. But we see plenty of um, flower buds forming. And I haven't seen any um, flower drop yet, so that's a, a very good sign. I have my mint plant, my basil plant, and in the back I have some uh, kale microgreens. That's more of an experiment to see how long I can keep them going in a very, very small growing container. It's for my own entertainment at this point in time. Can't garden outdoors, might as well garden indoors. It's just in some um, coconut core and it gets bottom watered. I had um, used a soldering iron to fashion holes in the base of the to-go container to allow for proper drainage and to also facilitate bottom watering. And now I'll take you down to our bigger grow room, our furnace room, where I have an overabundance of pepper plants. Um, we're real. <laughs> I've really overstepped my bounds and that's okay. I'm enjoying it thoroughly. I've never grown peppers indoors through the winter months and I'm really, really excited at what we're achieving in such a short amount of time. I'll take you down there so you can get a better look. And here you can see our growing assortment of pepper plants. I have two tangerine dream plants, both of them starting to set fruit. This one as well. I have stripped off the bottom leaves, just pinched them off with my nails, hoping to facilitate branching lower down, which it did, and it did so beautifully. Anywhere it sends out a new growth point, it sends out a new blossom. I have yet to witness any flower drop off of these two tangerine dream plants. They're really something. Um, they were started mid-September. Here we are two months later 
and we're already seeing fruit development. Had I not pinched off these leaves, you would have seen how full and, and um, luscious <laughs> these plants really, really looked. They make fantastic houseplants. They are so very attractive with the added benefit of the peppers, which is what we're in this for. Um, I have my two Ahi Goldens started at the same time in mid-September. This one I cut back. I'm trying to keep it as small as possible. This one I did not just as a comparison to see how well they will do. For whatever reason, the Ahi Goldens leaves seem to be much more photosensitive than any of our other plants. And that's okay. It's an observation more than anything. I don't know if over time these particular plants will adjust or perhaps their offspring will adjust. This is our gypsy that's been in hydro since April of this past spring. As you can see, we're getting another round of peppers. I've kept it hacked back. I've been brutal with this plant. My goal at this point in time is just to keep it alive throughout the winter so that we can get it into a large um, hydro setup outside late next spring. And here we have my adorable little cachucha plant. I have not cut it back. However, I have pinched out leaves in order to allow light to reach into the depths of the plant. It is growing exactly how I wanted it to grow in a tight, compact, bushy form without any effort on my part. It may very well be due to the fact that it is in such a very small vessel. Um, it is a very shallow jar. I have to be on top of the nutrient levels to make sure that it doesn't run dry, especially as the roots and leaves continue to develop. They will be sucking down a lot more, or I should say sucking up a lot more nutrients as we experience more leaf growth and more transpiration from the leaves. Here I have two ahi yoyos, one trimmed back hard, the other not trimmed at all. Again, it's just as a comparison and as an experiment. This one started off with much tighter um, spacing between the leaf nodes, so it just seemed like the ideal one to keep in a compact form, as compact a form as possible. I don't know that I will be keeping everything going for the long haul. Um, it's all in an experimental stage and I have other peppers that I will be adding soon. Here I have some um, Serrano Monte de Oros that I intend to put in very small growing vessels. I want to see if I can keep these as dwarf as possible. They have such a spectacular growth form. And I want you to see how I utilize the Oasis Horticube instead of utilizing three cubes. I utilized one, made extra holes, and I will separate these into three separate plants. I planted three seeds. I had 100% germination. Um, I wasn't prepared for that, but that's okay. Each one will go into a small jar, and we'll see what we can make happen. I have a few herbs going on here as well. I have some Chinese celery. I have in the back some dwarf dill and some bunching onions. On the side, I have some more... Um, broccoli rob starting and I have some lettuce that I've just set in the back that hasn't sprouted yet. I don't know that I'll continue lettuce beyond this particular planting but I did want to get one more batch started. We'll see how well it goes throughout the winter. Here we have our shishitos which required a division of the four plants in order to better facilitate their growth. Um, they just weren't going to fit any longer in one growing chamber, one growing vessel, so I split it into two. Um, we're seeing abundant flower buds forming. Hopeful that within oh, a month or so we'll be harvesting our first shishitos. They are doing far better than I ever anticipated. They are growing very rapidly. I see no issues with edema, no issues, no substantial issues with leaf curl, just some very minor stuff going on here. It could be from the intensity of the light. Um, 
yeah, I'm, I'm very well pleased with how well they're growing. Here we have our Serranos. This is the Monte Dioro. This one, hmm, I believe it's a Tampaquino, but don't quote me on it. I may be butchering that name. And this here is a New Mex Suave Orange. It's a very low heat habanero type that we transplanted back in September from soil to hydro. It took quite some time for it to establish itself in the hydro. Now it's doing very well. I keep pinching out leaves to allow the light to penetrate deeper within the canopy. We're seeing abundant flower buds starting to form. Um, I have no idea how well that will continue and what we'll see move on to fruition, but it's under ideal growing conditions right now. We do change out the nutrients once every three weeks, roughly, and it seems to work very well that way. Our Serranos, let me see how close I can bring you in, are really starting to set a lot of fruit here. I harvested some to make some hot pepper jelly earlier today. The Monte Dioro are very small peppers, even when fully formed. They're just under an inch long, at least this particular plant. This is the only one I've ever grown, so I have no idea if that's true to form or if it's an anomaly. And behind all of this, I have a larger King Starling Rhea. And I will pull you back so that you can get a better look. See, again, this has a lot of edema going on. Still has a lot of flower buds. I'm hopeful for plenty of fruit. I don't know what's up with the edema, though. I've never experienced it that drastically before. Um, we'll see. We're under different lights, and... Both of the larger plants are experiencing the same phenomenon, so I don't, I don't know what's up with that. And this is our runt of the litter. It is still the runt of the litter. I trimmed off a bunch of the leaves, cut it back a little bit. I'm going to give it every chance of survival. It's up to its own devices. If it wants to live, it'll live. If not, we'll move forward without it. We do have two very healthy plants, so I'm sure that we'll have plenty of peppers off of those. But I don't want to kill anything, so I keep nurturing it. We'll see what happens with that. And here we have our Corinto cucumbers, which are very rapidly taking over the shelving unit. We knew they would. We did not know how rapidly they would do so. We have abundant potential fruits. We have abundant foliage growth out of all of the cucumber cultivars that we've attempted to grow indoors. This one has by far the largest leaves to the point where I may need to start trimming some out just to open up the canopy. But I don't know how that would affect fruit set. Hopefully you can see the potential cucumbers here. They are literally at every leaf node. I've seen a few wither and die, which is to be expected. Um, you'll never have 100% fruition. I will be raising the shelf unit, adding another shelf to help support the continued growth. This is in a crack key setup. There is no aeration. Just about everything here is in a crack key setup with the exception of our New Mex Suave Orange and our Serranos. The Caratino pepper plant that I showed you in our last grow room tour is not long for this world. It just doesn't produce much and I have better plans for that growing area. Um, I also yesterday just set a few seeds into 
Ohorta cube for some Brazilian starfish plants. Um, should take maybe a week or two for them to germinate. In the furnace room, it's warm, so I anticipate that they'll probably germinate within a week. Keep you posted in the next grow room tour as to their progress. Never grown Brazilian starfish peppers before. Always wanted to try them, so I figured why not? We'll give them a shot. We've got all winter to make them happen, and hopefully they'll do well, and we'll move them back onto the back deck late spring. I wanted to take a quick look at our tomatoes. Here we have our little bird, Rosie Finch. She's getting ready to produce her last few tomatoes that we're going to allow come to fruition before we trim it back hard. I really want to keep the size of the plant in check. I have too many very long vines going on with my other tomato plants. And this one rebounds nicely from both cutting and cloning, which I've done a total of about five times now. And she keeps coming back strong. This one was planted in early March. And we've been harvesting on and off since June. It has been in hydro its entire life. And it really seems to work well for this particular dwarf variety. This is our dwarf firebird sweet. You can see the cat face tomato that's developing here. And it has another blossom on the other side that also appears to be cat face in nature. This is supposed to be a small slicer. It's also supposed to be dwarf and it's currently about two and a half feet tall. Because it's in hydro, it just does grow larger and more quickly than it would if it were in soil. I'm excited to have slicers during the winter months. We'll see how well that goes. This is a complete experiment. We've never done this before. And Daniel requested some slicers if at all possible. So that's what we're working on. Um, it's very close to the light so you can see some leaf burn. We're growing under a Maxi Sun PB1000. And like I said, it's very close, but it, this is the only location I have for it. And other than the leaf curl, it seems to be doing very well. And here we have a clone of the Siberian tomato plant that I had growing on the back deck in a self-watering container. It's now in hydro. And we see fruit set and we see more flowers as well. This was a complete experiment. I didn't even know if it would set fruit. It's supposed to be determinate, but it's behaving much more indeterminate than determinate. And quite honestly, I'm not even convinced that it is a true Siberian, but that's okay. We're getting fruit off of it, and that's all that really matters. And last but not least, I have this Tasty Wine, another dwarf slicer. It is not as vigorous a grower as the Firebird. I do not know that I'm going to continue growing this one out for any great length of time. I just don't have the space and my focus really is on peppers as long as I have one slicer in the mix or two if I keep the Siberian going, who knows. Um, as long as I have one slicer in the mix, I think we're good. As I said, I don't have the space to devote to it. But we'll keep it alive for a few more weeks just to see what it does. It is as old as the Firebird. It has not yet flowered. I have no idea when it will, if it will. We shall wait and see. I'll keep you posted on that one. Just a quick look at our greens. We did harvest our older broccoli rob. We enjoyed them very much. They were sauteed in just a little bit of butter with some garlic, some grass-fed beef, and a small amount of Italian sausage. We really did enjoy them. Um, we've since upplanted some newer plants 
And we have more broccoli rob seedlings down in the furnace room that I need to move up here to the cooler environment. Our bok choy are doing well. I need to start some more. I actually have some red leaf bok choy that I'm anxious to try. We've never grown those before. And the next time I visit the local farmer for my milk, I'm going to have to pick up some greens from her. She grows organically and I'm more than happy to support her while I wait for my own greens to fill in a little bit more. That's about all for now. We'll keep you updated as to the progress, the successes and the failures that we encounter along the way with this winter grow. We're just so excited to be gardening throughout the winter, other than some microgreens and some sprouts. We've never really done this before, so this is just so much fun for us. It really helps me to overcome the winter doldrums and it gives us some pretty delicious produce as a side benefit. Thanks for joining us. Please like, comment, subscribe, and we'll be back in the not too distant future with some more updates. Bye-bye.